This is another episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC, celebrating 40 plus years on the fringe of show business. Stories, interviews, and comedy sets from the famous and not so famous. Here's your host and MC, Scott Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great episode. We have something fun for you today. This gentleman has been doing marketing and research stuff called Message Therapy. He's a comic. He's an impressionist. He's got a terrific podcast. Let's welcome to the show, Hirsch Repune. <laughs> Hirsch, it's so great to have you on the show. It's great to be on the show, Scott, and I'm 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 excited about the not only that intro but the reception that it got. <laughs> that was well, the, the the crowd's excited to hear you. Now, I want to explain to my audience because I mostly have comics that have worked for me. We have not worked together, but we met through the amazing world of podcasting. You have a terrific podcast called Truth Taste Funny. And we uh, will get to that a little later, but in talking about podcasting, I found out you are, got your start as a stand-up comic. Uh, How long have you been doing comedy? I've been doing, I've been doing stand-up. I started doing stand-up when I was in my early twenties and I don't want to give away my, my age, but that was, uh, but it, that was more than 30 years ago. So I'll tell you that. But um, (laughs) yeah, I, I was living in New York. I was working in the advertising industry, but I, uh, but I started doing stand up. And you know, back then there were there weren't really open mics. There was just really really late time that you could go on. Yeah, um, showcase club kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, I started I started out then, and and I just continued to do it sporadically over the years while my career evolved in in advertising and public relations. I just continued to do to do stand up and um and so I, I i but now i'm i'm kind of merging the the two well but, we've, um, we've, yeah, yeah hirsch we've brought up several times in the podcast that stand-up comedy is a vehicle a lot of times to other things some of them do go on and get a sitcom or do become a professional road comic or cruise ships or corporate work, but also there's others that go into comedy writing or comedy production, or they, they, it, the comedy led them to something else. And in your case, with a background in marketing, I totally see how marketing and comedy can work together. I mean, some of the most famous TV commercials are the funny ones, right? Yeah, it's, it's very true, Scott. What, what worked for me was that Comedy is a great equalizer, and it it breaks the ice so well. And it also a little bit of self deprecation, a little bit of you know a lack of self seriousness builds trust in the audience. So on a very you know visceral level, a great tool for promotion. And because I I really like to do what I call selling the truth, which is you know, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. You can't, uh, you can't fool anybody. You really have to be genuine and put yourself out there as a brand or as a business person. And I think that comedy is a great avenue for that. So the marriage there is, uh, is a very organic one. Yeah. And I totally get that. I mean, the best comics, uh, there's always a sense of truth. I mean, sure. They exaggerate or extrapolate things to, for the humor, but it's always based on a truth. Now, going back to your comedy days, do you remember any of your first jokes? Was Were you a monologist? Uh, I know you do some impressions. What got you started in comedy? What was the, the foundation for what led to your marketing career? Well, I think first and foremost, I was very uncomfortable being myself. So impressions and characters gave me a way of, of protecting myself on stage. And in fact, when I started, I had, I had no plan to ever be a monologist or be myself on stage. And in fact, the, the very first time I went up was at, uh, I think it was Comic Strip in New York, and Eddie Murphy did a drop-in. And 
I was about to go on. It was probably one thirty or two in the morning. And Eddie Murphy did a drop in, showed up, and the, the managers, you know, club manager said, "Okay, you'll go on after after Eddie." <laughs> yeah, nothing and, like following Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, right. And 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 Eddie Murphy does forty five minutes and kills. And the comedian Richard Lewis was standing right by the door where you go on, and he just looked at me with his hand on his forehead, and he said, "I wouldn't do it." <laughs> and, and, and I went on, and I babbled. I, I know I did a, I did a couple of impressions, but I don't remember what I said or or any of it. And I don't, and I'm sure nobody remember, nobody else would remember either. But after <laughs> that, I thought I need a character that is unflappable and no matter what happens he he will go and do his thing and so i created this character named sunny swing and i would wear a tuck with a tie open and he was kind of like a combination of jerry lewis and and frank sinatra and he he would just tell these stories about his life in show business and never sing never really finish a song and it really took off and it was but it was a commitment you know, I, you know, you feel like kind of an idiot in a way showing up in a tux to a comedy club and you, realizing that you're going to be sitting there for two hours watching all these other comedians of the day, you know, go on. I was why I was watching Dave Attell and, and, and Louis C.K. and Dave Chappelle and, uh, you know, Colin Quinn and Dennis Leary and all these people were waiting to go up while I'm sitting there in my silly, you know, in my tux, but it worked. It was, it was, it was funny. Well, you, what you did and uh, this has been expressed to a lot of amateur comics is that it is a producer, which is what I am. You look for somebody that has a hook or has some way to catch the audience. It's much like marketing and sales is you have to do something to hook the, and, and bring the audience to you, uh, whether if it's a salesman so that you can make your pitch, but as a comic so that they go along, they buy into the concept, they buy into the character so you can take them on a journey of entertainment, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and once you commit to it, the fun for you as a comic is committing in spite of anything else. And, 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 and that compensates for the stage fright or the fear of not even being funny because it's not even me. It's the, it's the character. So the character can't fail. And therefore I actually can't fail. <laughs> and that was very, very liberating. Oh yeah, that, you know? that allows for some freedom. So Hirsch, do you remember any, did you use a, a different voice or was it just the the costume and the, the kind of attitude that made the character? The attitude, I, I'll do it for you the way I, and the one joke that I, one joke that I remember is, so, so, so it's that serious voice that kind of Jerry Lewis had a kind of a serious voice but i but it's not a jerry lewis impression and there's no jerry lewis explosion you know of of, of goofiness so sonny would say things like um you know look it's all about image you know they they say the image is one thing and the man is another so i put out this you know this image i said look nobody wants to see bill shatner without the hair piece and the girdle and that was like a that was a you know, a joke that I, that I would do. <laughs> well, I think um, it's hilarious for those people that know who, who that is. Yeah. yeah and, and at the time, at the, what's funny is Bill Shatner is still alive. He's 90 something. At the time he was, he was already older, but, but, the, but the hair piece in the girdle is what is, is to me like a great evocative image. Right, what, right. And, and, the hair piece and the girdle. But but the fact that you were doing this as Sonny gave you the freedom to even be a little bit of a, an insult comic and get away with it because it wasn't you per se. You were doing this character. Now, how did the that comedy convert into impressions and voice characters? Was that something you always had a talent for? Or did you work at it? Yeah, I, I never considered myself an impressionist, but I have a really good ear for voices and dialects. And I think I, I got that from my dad. He could do, you know, virtually any accent. He didn't really do impressions per se, but I remember being 12 or 13 years old and 
and going to, to uh, I grew up in Miami and I went to the theater performing arts in Miami and I saw a, a show called The Impossible Years starring an actor named Paul Lind. And Paul Lind used to be on Bewitched. He played an uncle on Bewitched and he, he was on uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Squares, Squares all, all the time. Yeah. Hollywood Squares all the time. And I, and I just, we wait, waited to, to get autographs at the end of the uh, show. He signs the playbill. And I walk up to him and I, and I just did an impression of him to him. And I just, I just said something like, you really break me up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and he, he thought it was hysterical. And, uh, and then I probably did a, an impression of, of Richard Nixon or something like that. Really silly. Like now that you, you know, and he said, Rich Little, that's a look out for you. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, that was so exciting and so thrilling to me. But I realized at that moment, you know, I, I like seeing that guy behind the desk signing the thing and not being the amateur, you know, the wannabe. And so that kind of set off in me this idea that I would at some point get good at stand-up comedy. Right, you know? right. And and what's interesting is that by using the Sonny persona and then having the character voices and impressions, you really did build a comedy career out of being everything but yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's it, right. And, th- and that, that was the missing, the missing piece. So when I got back into stand up, you know, like in 2009 or 2010, I had and I'd not done it for a while. And I got back into doing it. And one of the things that I learned was I had a, a, a friend of mine, a comedian named Rich Aronovich, who's a very, very good, good comedian. And, um, and he said, look, if you, if you just go on and do voices and accents and things, they're never going to trust you. The, the, the audience will never trust you. And so you have to, you're going to have to be yourself if you want them to trust you. And I, and I, and I, from there, I started doing sets that, you know, were more storytelling, you know, more, you know, telling stories about life and getting a little bit deeper and still, still funny stuff. Like I still did a, one of my favorite bits was doing Scarface as a, as a comedian. You know, the idea of what would, what would, what would Scarface be? If, if any, if, if Scarface can do comedy, anybody can do comedy. So how does Al and, Pacino and, sound as a comic? So it'd be like, uh, how are you guys doing tonight? You're having fun? You're having fun last? Let's see, what's going on in my life? <laughs> Just got out of a relationship. So she said, you know, and, I, and, and it was, it was him. It well, was him doing, doing stand-up. Yeah, and again, it's interesting, and I, I'm sure you see the irony, Hirsch, but your first decade or so, your career as a stand-up comic, you used the Sonny character and the voices and the impressions to kind of hide the real you, and yet you fast-forward in your marketing career, and the basis for your life now is truth. And yet yeah. you, the first, yeah. the first decade you were trying to avoid the truth. And now the last decade, you're really, uh, accepting the fact that, uh, truth is important. Being yourself is important. And I still think you can utilize the impressions and the voice characters, but I think your friend was giving you good advice. You need to open up and share with the audience to really let them buy into you as a, as an entertainer, but, uh, fascinating story. Uh, now you've also done a lot with marketing. You took your early marketing experience and now you're doing message therapy. Do you want to explain that and how maybe comedy helped you with that? Yeah. So it's a very interesting observation that you made Scott, because I did spend all that time trying to, you know, be other people and not, and not, deal with the, the, the reality or the truth. And I guess what happened with the, with the marketing was I realized that when it came to other people's image, I was always very committed to the truth, truth in advertising. And I thought, okay, well now that I've merged comedy and truth in my own life, 
I should try to do something a little bit geared more toward that. So rather than just be a copywriter or creative director or a publicist or a press writer, I would actually help people find the humor and the, and the hook in their messaging. And that's kind of therapeutic. So my, my, my statement to my clients was, you know, I want you to love the brand you see in the mirror and you, and in order to do that, we have to kind of sit down and talk about who you really are and what really sets you apart. And that's therapy. That's a form of therapy. The difference being that in the end, I'm probably writing something for them. I'm probably doing some copywriting. I'm doing some messaging. But really, hopefully, the experience is that they're going to come out of there and really love the brand that they see in the mirror. And and and, and that's been the reaction historically with, with some of the stuff I write about my clients is they're always like super enthused and they feel great about themselves reading what I've written. And that's a that's a kind of a fun superpower to have. Yeah, I think that's interesting then and so true that uh, there has always been the knowledge that truth in advertising makes a difference. The audience doesn't want it. The customers don't want to feel like they're being sold uh, bad fish or something. You know, they want to right. be, they want to believe in the product that they're purchasing. And I think it's interesting that you take the term therapy because you're telling these business and product owners you know, if you're going to sell this as a product you want people to love, you have to love it yourself. You have to yeah. look at it from a third eye, like your third eye or, or from an outside point of view and go, yeah, I really believe in this product. I love this product. I see the truth to this product and what it is offering the customer. If you can get the product manufacturer, the client to see that, it makes it so much easier to turn around and sell it to the customer. And I, I think that's genius, Hirsch. And I think that uh, the fact that you had not just a marketing background, but I think all those years waiting to get on stage and doing your impressions and doing your comedy gave you that kind of insight. Like I was alluding to before, all those years of not being yourself – is helping you see who you are and then you're turning around and sharing that with others so they can see who they really are. I mean, it's, it's a pretty level line, Hirsch. I think you've uh, had an interesting career in what I always like to say, it all starts with stand up comedy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Scott. I appreciate that. And it, and it, and it took a while. It's funny. It took, it, it, you're right. When you look at it now, it feels like a very straight line but it sometimes takes a lot of twists and turns to get to the end of a straight line. You know, what you realize is a straight line. It, it, there's a lot in there of uh, indecision and confusion and, and, and trial and error. And like, yeah. You know, not be, people saying, what do you do? And you know, you're not, you're not really able to ex explain it. And I'm still at the kind of, I think hopefully the tail end of that where people say, what do you do? You know, and I can say I'm a brand storyteller, but I can really say I'm a message therapist. And if they ask, well, what does that mean? I can explain it. But it's it's better than saying, well, I'm a comedian, I'm a screenwriter, and I'm a, I'm uh, I'm I'm an actor sometimes. And I well, Hirsch, I let's be honest. I'm, the message therapy line, that title, is your new hook. It's the reason yes. that people ask, oh, what's that mean? It's kind of like the hook in comedy and getting on stage and being sunny, the character sunny, and then going into your material, the character sunny is the hook. Once you've got the audience hook, then you can share your comedy in your life. Now as a marketing person, your hook is, well, I'm a message therapist. Well, everyone's right. going to go, well, what's that? Well, that opens the door. Now you're communicating. Now you're sharing. Now you're selling and uh, I, whether you planned it or not, it's a great way to uh, be doing things. And it sounds like, uh, from what I've seen in my research, you've been very successful. So congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. But I think I think the 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 truth is it has to it has to be your favorite thing. 
that you do. You know, there's there's different philosophies that, you know, one is that, you know, your job doesn't have to be your favorite thing. You can still do your favorite thing. Your job is what all the other purposes that it serves. But I think the best case scenario is when you find your favorite thing. And if there isn't a name for it, you just create one. You know, the job you have doesn't have to fit into a, a drop down menu. And like you say, if you're successful at it, that's evidence of the fact that you're that you're on the right track and you and you and uh, you know something clicked. Well, Hirsch, you've been very successful, and in it goes without saying that the struggles that you had as a stand up comic and uh, what you've gone through. Uh, the ups and downs, as you said, for in your marketing life and your entertainment life have brought you to a really good place. I think, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you own a company or you have a product, you might want to reach out to Hirsch and, uh, learn a little bit more about his message therapy. Uh, if you just like good, uh, conversation, check out his podcast, the truth taste funny. It's really good. And how would people reach you, Hirsch? Um, well, they can reach me through my through my website, through HirschRepoon.com. They can also, if they can find the Truth Taste Funny we- uh, show on TruthTasteFunny.com. But, um, but coming up will be the kind of uh, ultimate synergistic podcast, which will be called Yes Brand. And that plays off the... Uh, off the yes and rule of improv, which is that we acknowledge, you know, someone makes a certain statement like the Martians have landed and rather than just, you know, discarding it or, or denying it, the scene partner will say yes. And they're all wearing business suits or whatever it might be. And so on this show, yes, brand, I'm going to be bringing CMOs, CEOs, uh, entrepreneurs on the show to get real about their their brand and try to come up with some funny ways to break the ice and get them to the next level. So it'll be a form of message therapy on on the air, so to speak, on my podcast. And that'll be another way for people to find me by, uh, by searching out that podcast, Yes Brand. But I think, uh, but I think HirschRepoon.com, H-E-R-S-H-R-E-P-H-U-N, dot com is where they can they can reach out to me there's a contact sheet there uh whether it's whether it's about being on one of the shows or whether it's uh whether it's about getting some message therapy of their own well i think it's great ladies and gentlemen you heard it here first there's a brand new podcast coming out it'll be out by the time this airs so check it out look for yes brand and you can check Apple, Spotify, Pandora, all the platforms. Uh, Hirsch, thanks so much for sharing that information. I know the audience will find that interesting. And again, congratulations on taking your early comedy career and your background in marketing and basically as an entrepreneur creating your own package, your own message therapy that allows you to still share your sense of humor, still share your comedy, but put it to good use in marketing. Uh, that's really incredible. And your other podcast, The Truth Taste Funny. So thanks for being on the podcast today. Thanks so much, Scott. Thanks for all that you do. I think uh, your insight and, and uh, your experience and ability to kind of really zero in on uh, what what what's behind the comedian? What's behind the standup is just fantastic. Uh, well, you're welcome, and it's been a lot of fun. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that's Hirsch Rapoon, and he is doing some amazing stuff. So check out his two podcast, The Truth Taste Funny, and the new one, Yes Brand. And we will talk to him again, hopefully later. But in the meantime, get your message therapy from Hirsch. Hey, thanks again. Hirsch, we'll be uh, back to you soon. Hope you enjoyed doing the podcast. Thanks so much, Scott. It was a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. There'll be another great show next week. Thanks for listening. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC. For information on the show, merchandise, and our sponsors, or to send comments to Scott, visit our website at www.standupyourhostandmc.com. 
Look for more episodes soon and enjoy the world of stand-up comedy. Visit a comedy showroom near you.